Hello. Um, I'm Shu Yang from C Studio. It's my first time to be in TTC, so super excited and pleasure to be here and nice to meet you all. Uh, today I would like to use this opportunity to talk a little bit about this is my controller to talk about open technology. Um, before the technology, there is a, I want to share a little bit about Shenzhen. This is the city that we come from. Um, 40 years ago, Shenzhen is just sands and water and has nothing there. But now Shenzhen is the mega city of China, and finance or logistic contribute a lot to Shenzhen's GDP. However, it is the Shenzhen's uh, capability of making electronics to put Shenzhen in a map of uh, global in a, in a global map. So Shenzhen actually makes 90% of the world's electronics. And among all these electronics, I would I would like to take the cell phone as an example to to to, to give you an example. So Shanghai uh, is a Chinese word. Literally, it means a quote from Wikipedia. Uh, it means the imitation or trademark infringing goods. And uh, this Chinese word, literally, it means uh, the mountain stock aids of a warlord or bandits that, you know, is far from, far from the official control. So Shanghai used to be really famous in Shenzhen, and Shenzhen is well known because of the copycat of Shanghai products. So like 15 years ago, you will find this kind of products available in the market, like use the Unkia, as this one you take the name of Unkia, which is a little bit different from Nokia, and just change the O to C. And probably someone can tell me which iPhone is fake. Well, you cannot tell the differences accord, uh, uh, based on the appearance. They look exactly the same. But once you click the Safari, you will find, oh, it's an Android system. So, like uh, we used to really famous for this, but Shanghai product, like copycat phone is dying uh, for a lot of reasons. For example, like uh, government policy suppressed really strongly, and uh, new players join the game, for example, like uh, Xiaomi or Vivo, their phone is already, uh, like this product is perfect for the customers who, would, uh, who cannot afford for the original branded uh, phone and would go for cheaper options. So this kind of product are widely exported to Africa. So be because of the new player join in and Xiaomi's phone already so cheap and it's affordable for the Africa farmer. So this kind of phone are dying now in Shenzhen. And the phone inventor got panicked because the margin of the Shanghai phone, you know, means nothing to them right now. So they evolved. And um, this is the funny part. So for the phone vendors in other areas, they will probably prefer to uh, use iPhone as a standard and try to make the phone, you know, the, it, it functions, looks like a, an iPhone. But as for their peers in Shenzhen, they, the, their selling point is things that you cannot do with the iPhone. So now the mainstream of Shanghai products are offering niche product with specific bespoke features. For example, there's a Mecca inside, uh, there's a compass inside to help you locate uh, Mecca for daily prayer. Or uh, you can combine with the bottle opener for beer with the phone that you can use to open the beer. Or there's a uh, the phone shaver that you can use your phone to shave the, the beer. Yes, it's true. Go to Shenzhen and check if I'm right. And um, yeah, so, but I mean, look at the picture. As you can tell that this, this kind of phone, it won't go widely popular. It's just for a, a small group of people. And if you ever build a hardware, you will understand it is so hard to build something in small quantity. Um, uh, you may even have problems in finding the material. But in Shenzhen, on the contrary, this unusual and crazy options are readily you know, available in the market. So actually, don't just look at the product itself. It's just behind the products. There's a whole super agile manufacturing and supply chain system for electronic in Shenzhen. And Seed, this is the company that I come from, Seed, uh, uh, is you know founded in Shenzhen in 2008, uh, like 12 years ago, and our goal is to our goal is to lower the barrier for 
developer to build the IoT hardware device. This is our overview. So we, now we have around 250 people. We have four global offices, and we serve uh, 250,000 uh, developers globally. In our, um, so in our perspective, there are five layers uh, for a, in a complete IoT solutions. There are sensors, communication, gateway software, and and, and cloud, so we partner with different incredible partners in each layers. Let's dive in each layers. Is, for example, sensors, uh, we have 300 different kinds of sensors that can satisfy, satisfy your need, like robotic and, and motion detective, and communication modules that cover most of the commonly used communication protocol, and gateway that can fit for different scenarios, like respeaker is for voice interaction, uh, BeagleBone is for industrial control. SenseCap is for wireless environment sensing. So we designed all this product with the modular mindset. So with this product, you'll be able to build something really quick, just like building the blocks and co connect them together. And you will have the minimum viable product, you know, probably within a few minutes. And we also work with a lot of different software and cloud company. So actually, this is our business model. We provide all the products that you saw above, um, and we help our customers to help them to get the prototype real quick. And then we have the design service to help them to turn their prototype into an actual product. And then there's a small batch manufacturing, larger batch manufacturing, and global distribution coming after. So what we provide is a one-stop hardware service for hardware. We advocate open source a lot because what we see is this, pro so for example, if you're a startup or an individual and you don't need something, you don't need 100 pieces uh, at just, you know, at, at the beginning of your business. So with this products, you will be able to leverage the power from the community behind it. There will be open source, a schematic open source source, source code, and also the project that share on a platform like Hexter, and you will be able to all these resources it will enable you to build something really quick and get it out of the market to, for the testing. And sustainable development. This becomes a, the mainstream values of our society right now. So we believe that technology can play a really important part of it. Uh, we choose agriculture as our entry point. Uh, there's already a lot of reports out there to talk about the challenge of agriculture, uh, like we are going to have a lot of large population, like more than something, something. And uh, there are food security problem, the food shortage problem. So if you solve the problems on agriculture, then you will be able to solve a lot of things. And plus, agriculture is the biggest source for the income for the rural uh, household people, for example, the Africa, the country in Africa, uh, their agriculture GDP probably is like more than 40% in their countries. So we have some products for agriculture. This is a video to help you understand this. SenseCap is an industrial sensor network solution, mainly for collecting environmental data, which is transmitted to the cloud server. By adopting LoRa and NB-IoT technology, SenseCap can achieve ultra-low power, wide area network communication with distance up to 10 kilometers. The built-in battery lasts up to three years. The electronics are encapsulated in IP66 grade enclosures, suitable for all types of outdoor environments. The deployment is easy. By simply scanning the QR code, the device provision will be done within seconds. Users can then acquire sensor data from the SenseCap Cloud Platform via API. The Cloud Platform is powered by Microsoft Azure with highly security features. The user-friendly API is based on HTTP and MQTT protocols, which can speed up system integration for developers. SenseCap is suitable for smart agriculture, precision farming, environmental monitoring, and other wireless sensing applications. 
We will continue to expand its family of sensors to meet the diversity of user needs and to serve the demands of different industries with IoT technology. Yes, so this is, um, uh, with this barcode, uh, QR code, you'll be able to get a catalog of this, of this product. So we have around more than, around 10 different kinds of sensor right now, and our roadmap is still expanding, and we open the software API of it. I will just wait for you to finish scanning the QR code. <laughs> um, this is a user case of SenseCap that I, I love the most. So it's not a, a, just a traditional agriculture solution that you know, integrate the sensor with the irrigation system and then it will become smart irrigation. Uh, this user case, I love it, is because this user case we, is our, the, the first location that we deploy our, our sensors. We uh, learn a lot based on this user case. So this farmer is called Deng, and he is a, um, <clears throat> He is a new style of farmers that he take over about three hectare tea plantation from his father, and he is uh, open to embrace the technology of it. And what he grow is a is a tea called high mountain tea. So it's a kind of tea that um, refers to that grow in a high mountain that are more than 1,000 meters above the the sea level. And if that you grow the tea under this condition, which means that the, the temperature differences between day and night will be super big, and the high humidity will make the amino, ammonia, ammonia? No, amino acid. I forgot that English word, but it, it's responsible for the um, quality of the tea. So because of this, his tea sells really well, but before he sells channel, he can only sell the tea to to a big company who dominate the, t China, uh, dominate the tea market in, in China. But now with our technology, we'll be able to deploy our device there and to prove that you know, our tea is really growing under this condition, under this environment. And he will be able to sell his tea directly to the end user and build the credibility and build the traceability with the end customer. And he will be able to sell a better price. So he can gradually, you know, building his brand uh, already. And we also, uh, dive, we also put a lot of investment in education because I believe that education is the foundation of a lot of things. So we uh, work with Yannick. Yannick is, a, is an economic professor in, in Paris, Sabona University. And he also believes that education can solve a lot of problems in Pan-Africa. So he uh, built a uh, a tech academy in Africa and to help you and help the children to identify the problems that are within the community and encourage them to solve the community problems uh, with technology and yeah and if education I think is equal so every child deserves uh, a chance of of quality education even students with visual impairments they are you know no inception and this product is we developed with APH, uh, Cambridge University, and, and Microsoft. Uh, it is CodeJump. Uh, the name of it is CodeJumper, and it's a physical programming language that can teach visual uh, impairments children to, to do how to coding, to, to teach the logic. And yes, this is something about uh, Shenzhen Seed and open technology. A little advertisement. We have a booth out there, and we just launched our module, uh, a LoRaWAN module based on Semtech latest chips, 1302. So feel free to stop by to, to, to chat with us for more information about the module or SunScape or anything you're interested. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Xu Yang. Stay uh, on stage oh. because we have maybe time for one one quick question. No, I thought uh, I see a lot of guys with uh, probably developers with beards here, including me. You should have brought the telephones with the razor. <laughs> you could have do, uh, done good business, I think. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Well, if there's no any more questions, then thank you so much, uh, Xu Yang Tzu. <laughs>